great day to all of you. And thank you for joining me at WDRB Media and WGIV Charlotte. This is the Boys to Men broadcast with your host, Terrell Murphy. So glad to be with you this Sunday as I am every Sunday at 730 p.m. right here on WDRB Media and WGIV Charlotte. I'm so excited about today, so thankful for today because I'm just one who believes that every day we're giving another chance. We're given another opportunity to become the best you or the best me that we can be. And you know what? You never know who your life is on a crash course with. And that's important because you never know who you're going to impact or you never know who you're going to be impacted by as well. But I'm hopeful that everything that your life was created to do and everything that your life was created to be, you, my friend, are accomplishing it on this journey. I've said it before. The journey is just as important as the destination. Often we're excited about the destination. Am I there yet? Are we getting there yet? What I've said, what I've found is that that destination gets a lot more simple if I make the most out of every day on the journey. Just taking my time to develop, to grow, to put myself in a place where I can learn, where I can be edified, where I can share with people that are like minded. And then sometimes share with people that don't think exactly like I do, because in the course of all that, you become a greater person and a better person. And really, that's what life is all about. I've often told people that we come from eternity into time and then we go back into eternity and what we become between the time we enter the earth and the time we leave the earth is extremely important. And every person I believe has a call and every person I believe has a mission in life to bring change. And all of that works together to make a better world for you and for me and even for the generations that are to come after us. And so that's why I'm excited about every day. And that's why I'm excited to be with you today. For weeks now, the Boys to Men broadcast has been delighted to share encouragement with all of you valuable and well-meaning mothers of young boys. It's really been a joy to me to be able to connect with you via the sound waves. And I'm sure that as we continue to grow together, all of your sacrifice for your boys will be greatly celebrated, not only by you and not only by them, but it's going to be celebrated by the people that are observing the change and the enhancements and the betterment of your lives because you have chosen to invest time into your son, invest time into each other. And I'm telling you, you reap what you sow. And when you sow great and solid and awesome things into your boys, you're going to get that back. It might not be overnight. It might not be right around the corner, but it could be. But I'm telling you, in the long run, that boy becomes a man. And that's really what this time together is all about. I want to say to you because I understand mothers that you give up so much for your sons and mostly they're unaware of the depth of the true love that you really have for them. And, you know, to, to, to be honest, I don't think they'll ever be able to really comprehend how much you care. And that may be a lot to hear, but it's really true. Now, on the other end, that doesn't mean that your son will not have a good level of love or honor or respect for you. And I proclaim that he will, mom. But regardless of how much he may realize it or not, this is the best thing for you to do. Just continue with everything in you. Muster it up. Move with tenacity. Move with endurance, but with everything in you, give him the greatest level of love that you can give him. And I tell you, I stand with you and believe that he will recognize it and that he will love you unconditionally as long as you live. See, we have to have a vision for our sons. We have to have a vision for the process that we're walking through with our sons. We can't look at where they are right now, but we have to have vision. It looks down the road. It looks around the corner vision for change vision for uh for for manners to be developed and vision for his grades to get better vision for his interactions to become stronger vision for his articulation to become more clear and when you're pursuing vision it doesn't matter what tries to get in the way you jump over the wall you leap over the wall you stand on the wall see that's what really prosperity is all about it's the ability 
to abound over whatever circumstances are coming against you. And I just declare that you're going to to move in great prosperity as you walk in vision for your son's life. I'm very excited that this resource, Boys to Men, is being a blessing to so many of you. Uh, Not all of your issues have been resolved, and I would be foolish to believe that they have. But here's the thing that I rejoice in. I rejoice in the fact that we're making progress, and that progress will continue to lead to small victories that will become big victories. Hey, thanks for staying in the game, Mom. And remember, your boy has got to become a man. I look forward to this evening's show and we'll be back in just a few moments. I'm your boys to men host, Terrell Murphy. Katrina at Divine Touch Photography will magnify your moments, help you promote your business, improve your appearance, and enhance your memories. Divine Touch Photography does it all, specializing in weddings, private and social events, headshots, and so much more. Right now, you can get unlimited images and a free 8x10 glossy printed portfolio with the purchase of any individual or group photography session. For more information, call 704-813-9333. 704-813-9333. Or just visit DivineTouchPhotography.com. Earn double the coverage and up to $200 off all event and wedding packages. Certain rules and restrictions apply. Contact a Divine Touch Photography associate for more details. That's Divine Touch Photography. 704-813-9333. Welcome back. And I want to encourage you to continue to join us weekly at WDRB Media and WGIV Charlotte. And you can also download the free app, Tune In. Download it, go to WGIV, click and listen. It's really an easy way to a life transforming resource. And I want to make sure that you're encouraging as many people as you know to get on board with this transformation process for their boys. They may not realize the power of it. They may not realize how inundated they are with the challenges that training a boy up can bring. They may not even understand and know how valuable and how important it is to move them along in a way that that child can develop because often we get so stuck with where our child is that we don't think that there's any hope for them. We don't think that it's really even important to try and move them into a greater dimension or into a greater sphere. And and so we'll just sit back and allow things to to happen. But I want you to see yourself as a messenger. You know, when we when we live in life, we should make an impact and we should make a difference in other people's lives. And all of us are not going to be the ones that have our names called all over the world. But we can affect where we are. When you go to work tomorrow, there's some mother on your right or on your left. There's some mother on the elevator in the parking deck or walking down the sidewalk. There's some mother that you'll see in the restroom or you'll see on the bus or at the bus stop. There's some mother you'll see at the gym or at the ball field who are training up young boys and often they don't know where to go or how to go there or what to do next. I want you to live your life as an impact player, as a messenger, and bring hope to someone and get them to the Boys to Men broadcast. Just have them to go and download the Tune In app, T U N E I N, the Tune In app. Click to WGIV when it comes up and just listen to the show. Tell them that's just that easy to do and let them know how your life has been enhanced. Before I went out of the country, I was enlightening you moms to the reality of emotional pain that your boys experience. Um, Some, to your knowledge, uh, you know about and some of the pain you don't know about, but it actually does exist. We may not have any uh, idea of it, may not have any knowledge of it, but we cannot discount it and believe that it's not there because there are so many things that creep into our boys' lives that impact their development, their growth, and their ability to really connect with you as their as their mother. And, and in that message last week, I stated that you must guard their lives with your life. You must guard their life, meaning your boys. 
I was saying to you, mom, you must guard their lives with your life. It's very important that you are able to get in between that which is not right. It's, a, it's important that you're able to get in between that which they may not understand or know the way to to navigate through. It's very important that you're able to tap into those things that they just don't have answers for, but they're overwhelmed with by and inundated in, but it becomes your part and your role to be that watchman on the wall for the very mind, spirit, and soul of your child. Uh, when I say guard with, with your life, it's because your children are the justification of your life. So why, so why may you say, why does he want me to guard them with my life? You might ask that. Uh, it's because there's a crisis that our young men are in. And I shared this with you briefly last week, and it's called negative culture. Our culture is predominantly negative. Every aspect of it is predominantly negative and that which is negative releases negative and those who are exposed to the negative, if they don't have the skill sets to overcome the negative, they don't have the discipline, if they don't have the vision, if they don't have the knowledge to understand the negative that comes at them, then it can 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 move them into a great place of disadvantage. But this negative culture that the large majority of your boys live in, they're influenced by it. But not only are they influenced by it, they are affected by it in a great way. The biggest landing places that this negative culture has is the emotions of your child. It's a negativity is like a heat seeking missile and it is looking for someone's boy to to land on someone's boy to infiltrate someone's boy to rest upon and seek to bring destruction in that child's life. And you would think that our society would be more proactive in doing things that would be for the betterment of society, but mostly because of the influence of the, the seven pillars of every culture, our arts and entertainment, our media, government, uh, business, family, uh, religion, uh, um, uh, media in, in and of itself, these things work against, for the most part, the development or the healthy development of our children. And if we're walking through them with our eyes closed and we're not taking time to discern that while they were put in place to be useful, how negative so many of them have become, we'll continue to allow our children to be exposed to these things. And then that works against you in your home. Now, when I talk about emotions and the, the negative culture landing in the emotions of your child, when I talk emotions, I'm talking about the mood. I'm talking about the temperament, uh, the personality, the, the disposition, and then the motivation of your, of your son. When, when I, when I say mood, I mean a temporary state of your son. He's not in that place and in that way all the time, but it's a mood that he goes in and out of. It's a temporary state uh, that your son is in. Negative culture affects that because it can dictate, determine, and influence his mood, which works against the home, which works against you, and it works against his, his development. Secondly, when I speak of emotions, uh, the word temperament comes to my mind. Temperament means his usual state of mind. Well, it can be effective by negative culture that will take him out of his usual state of mind and put him into another state of mind, which again can be a negative state of mind because of the play on his emotions. Thirdly is personality. When you look at personality, you really think of the, the patterns of behavior or the patterns of activity or the patterns of an attitude that your child may have. That's his personality. And what is going on around him, what he is visualizing, what he's seeing, what he's putting his hands to, what he's engaging with other people, that can have an effect on his 
personality. And then you begin to see changes in his behavior and changes in his activity and changes in his attitude. These things are very serious and have to be recognized by you, mom. And so when we talk about emotions, we talk again about mood, temperament, personality, and then disposition, his tendencies. He has a tendency to do this or a tendency to do that. Sometimes his tendencies will change. Often his tendencies will stay the same. Sometimes those tendencies are are good. Sometimes they're bad. Sometimes they're indifferent. Sometimes they're all over the board. That's because of your child trying to make his way through life and through these neg- this negative culture that he encounters every single day. And sometimes he doesn't know if he's coming or if it's going and it affects uh, what he may tend to do, his tendencies, what he may tend to do in a particular week or a particular month or a particular season in his life or a particular grade level or a particular age. These tendencies can be, again, all over the place, but they're often driven by what's going on in our culture that he's exposed to. And then there's motivation as an emotion. The inner drive, uh, is, it could be considered the, the, the motivation. Why a person does something that they do. Very important, mom, that you know and recognize uh, the motivational reason behind what your child does. See, see, there's a saying that I use when I'm, I'm dealing with, with, with young people sometimes, and it's that game knows game. Game knows game. And so, mom, sometimes. Sometimes his motivation is game. He's trying to do something or trying to get something by doing something around the house or doing something with you. And what he's after is really to manipulate you because he's not really seeking to change. He just has enough game to outgame you. So game has got to know game. And all of us have run game. All of us have, have done some things to manipulate people. Well, don't forget how to discern that when you see it in somebody else so that game would know game and game would know what to do when game comes at game. But our children have a lot of different motivations that are cultivated, that are developed and placed inside of them by the negative culture that they're in. All of these things, the mood, the temperament, the the disposition, uh, motivation, personality, these are affected more by experience external stimuli than we would like to think or said in another way, there's more going on on the outside of the house than inside the house. And so much that is outside is making its way inside your house and not only inside your house, but also inside of your sons. See what we are uh, as, 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 as parents, but talking to you moms, we're mostly aware of our exchange with our sons, but we're not fully aware of the exchange that they have with other people. You know, it's like pulling teeth to find out, well, what did y'all do? What did y'all talk about? What did he say? What? And it's like they don't want to let you into that conversation. They don't want to, you to know what they're talking about. And so our children become very, uh, uh, um, uh, I don't want to say withdrawn, but they uh, use fewer and fewer words in their discussion about their relationship with their with their with their friends or whomever and that's why we have to ask open ended questions questions that drive a response uh, we have a rule in our home. We don't deal in one word responses because it's important that you learn to teach your child to articulate. You teach your child how to develop, construct and carry on a sentence, teaching your children how to respond to things that people may say. You can't get through life saying yes, no. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Your child can't get through life. And mom, if you let him learn to live with one word responses, then he's probably going to have one zero behind his paycheck when he starts working. <laughs> but if you'll teach that young man how to engage conversation and don't allow him to stop at small phrases and short phrases, but give him opportunities to articulate, let him say, I don't understand. Let's make that clear. Let's talk about that. 
and give him a chance to begin to articulate himself, he'll grow into a young man that is able to communicate what he's thinking, what he's feeling, what he's seeing. And that's very, very important in the marketplace. And so there's a lot that goes on inside of your sons and a lot that goes on inside of your house that is bought in by your sons because of the things that they uh, uh, engage on the outside. So again, we're, we're mostly aware of the exchange they have with people. I mean, with us, but the exchange that they have with other people, the exchange they have with music, the exchange they have with television and social network. We usually don't have the best handle on that. And it's the negative messages that our sons are confronted with that make it difficult, mom, to train your boy up to be a man. That's why he has to be guarded by your awareness, your wisdom, your discipline, and your love. I'll be back with you in just a moment. Hold on to that thought. This is Dr. P. Business editor in chief of the Profit and Growth magazine asking you to go to www.wgivcharlotte.com to read our magazine. The Profit and Growth magazine is filled with information and inspiration regarding business, relationships, fashion, entertainment, prosperity, real estate, fitness, and the list goes on and on. We need this magazine, a part of our digital library, so we can continue to profit and grow in every area of our lives. So please take this opportunity to read the Profit and Growth magazine in its entirety on WGIVCharlotte.com. Then be so kind as to share it with others, a part of your email and social media distribution. It is our prayer that your lives are blessed and enriched as a result. It's Terrell Murphy, Boys to Men broadcast. I'm back with you enjoying our time together today. And we're just talking about guarding our sons with our with our lives, making sure that they are shielded from the things that go around on around them. Number one, being aware of the things that go on around them and then helping them to navigate through those things. Uh, we have we have a culture breakdown. It's not just in the United States, but it's an international cultural breakdowns that uh, that that you're having to train your young sons in. And some of you need help. And I understand that because it's not an easy task. And that's why we're here with the boys to, to men broadcast. And if you got any questions, you can reach out to us at ask me B to M now dot com. Ask me at B to M now dot com. Moms, I, I, I want to throw this out to you. you. You have to think in the following ways to redirect your son and to preserve him, redirect him from these negative things and to preserve him. What I've discovered in my parenting is that it is becoming more and more important to realize and be proactive in protecting the mental and physical health of your child more now than any other time in the history of the world. James Dobson, a, a phenomenal uh, uh, man who who works with, with families and has for many years, James Dobson says this. He says, you wouldn't think of letting someone injure your child physically if you could prevent it. Why then would you stand by and watch the spirit of your boy or girl be warped and twisted? He goes on to say the damage to the self concept that occurs during adolescence can haunt an individual for the rest of his life. Wow. What a statement. Now, this is big stuff right here. He says, he says, moms, you wouldn't think of letting someone injure your child physically if you could prevent it. He says, so, so why then would you stand by and watch the spirit of your boy or your girl be warped and twisted? And that's what culture does to our sons. That's what negative culture does to our sons. It, 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 uh, it warps them and it twists them that their perceptions begin to be off. 
And that which is wrong to them is that which is right. And that which is right is that which is wrong. Uh, our young people feel like it's wrong to communicate, to have too many words, to have something to say uh, to their parents. And so they barely talk because somewhere that's gotten twisted. They've seen the negativity that's come through music that is uh, um, uh, 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 antagonistic toward parents and antagonistic toward authority. They've watched that. They've heard their friends relationships. They've uh, looked at social networking and heard the things, seen the things they've watched movies and television and seen how negative uh, relationships between mom and dads or mom and children are portrayed and all of these things begin to sink into their spirit and sink into their mind. And he's saying you wouldn't sit around and allow someone to injure your child physically. So why would we allow them to be injured by these external influences that many of us are unaware of because we're not taking the time to get into their lives as we should. And, and, and again, you didn't just bring that boy into the world because you had a, a, a hormonal enlightenment that led to pregnancy and to delivery. Uh, that may have been where you're thinking, but God's plan is this young man has a destiny and he is supposed to become something that has never been in the earth before. And the better that he is guarded, and I'm not saying he shouldn't have freedom, but I'm saying there has to be mechanisms and systems put in place that guard and protect him in such a culture that they are vulnerable to. So let's look at guarding that gem that God's given to you. Number one, you've got to pay attention to his words and his gestures. They'll say a lot about what's going on with him, what he's watching, what he's thinking, how, how, how he's perceiving things. You have to pay attention to that. Sometimes you just have to sit and watch your child. Sometimes you have to be very uh, aware of the things that he's saying or the things that he's not saying. You've got to know what he reads, know what he's listening to. Uh, these things are very important because they impact him. Just because a book's out of the library at school doesn't mean that book is good and healthy for your your, your child just because he's in the bookstore doesn't mean that he's reading the right things just because he has a magazine doesn't mean that he's reading the right articles in the right way to get the right understanding you've got to get a handle on what he reads you have to get a handle on what he's listening to because something is always competing for his ear and normally that thing is in direct uh, uh um um uh, di diabolically rather, uh, um, boy, I'm sorry, diabol diabolically opposed to what you're teaching him. And you've got to know what he's listening to. Is he sad? Is he angry? Who are his friends? When's the last time you had a meaningful conversation with him? No television on, no other siblings running around uh, in uh, uh, coming into the conversation. When's the last time that you just took a drive with him or a walk with him? Well, that sounds like a lot. It is a lot. And training a child up is a lot. When we make that boy, we have major responsibility for him. And it's not a job. It's a calling mom to develop him into the next dimension into the next level the movies that he watches do you research them do you go online and find out about a movie as soon as he says he'd like to see a movie or do you have him do the research bring the research to you he can go online and he can find a, a resource that talks about movies it, it tells you all the profanity that may be in it all the sex scenes that may be in it all levels of disrespect to parents that may be in it these are resources that you can tap into and now let him read to you about the movie and let him say to you if he thinks that movie is appropriate or not. But just because he's going to a movie and it's PG, PG to them was R to us. And R was NC-17. And so the, 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 uh, um, the levels by which movies are rated because of the way that society has evolved has lessened. And so we have to look at things and realize, well, really, a G movie is a PG movie. I go into PG movies and see children in there by themselves. I'll go into R movies and see children in there by themselves. And they're unable to actually navigate through the very things that they're seeing. So they internalize them or take them to their friends who can't give them the true way 
to uh, to hear, to see and then to express what they're encountering. So they begin to live that out in their own way because they were left to themselves. All of these things are very, very in sport. And then the last thing you can do is you can smell your child. That's OK. Just smell him. Is he drinking? Is he smoking? Is it cigarettes? Is it marijuana? You have to have a, you have to have a nose for him because that's very, very important as well. Columnist Kathleen Parker says this. She believes that boys can be trained and results can be good even in this negative culture. I love her advice, mom, and I'm going to close with this. She says this. She says, be reasonable, be smart, and be fully awake. Be reasonable, mom, be smart, and be fully awake. See, these are small things that you can do that will take you a long way. And you can reduce their exposure to violence. You can help them more academically. You can be there with them in their homework, in their daily things. When they cry, let them cry if they need to. Support them when they're down. Help them to see options in a greater way. Just by being plugged into their life by the things that she is saying. And she lays it out so simply. Be reasonable, mom. Be smart. And be fully awake. I believe these are some of the best means and some of the the, uh, eye opening things that you can do in order that your child can grow from that boy into a man. Continue to demonstrate to him things that are right, things that our society has lost. But most importantly, love him with the greatest level of love that you can give him. Our time is up. But I've enjoyed sharing with you tonight and I'll be here next week, not by myself, but I'm going to be here with you and I'm going to be here with your friends and we're going to continue to move forward. Everyone meet someone, share with someone how they can plug in our empowerment session next week at 7.30 p.m. on WDRB Media and WGIV Charlotte or by way of the TuneIn app. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at askme at b2mnow.com or like me on Facebook. Mama, you can't make that boy a man, but you can bring that man out of him. I'm Terrell Murphy, your boys to men host. We'll get together next week. Take time, invest into your sons. Take Take care. I'm out. Peace.